Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 for part 3 of this week's catch up video. Because we got up to quite a lot of stuff in the last stream and also because there won't be a stream this week. So last time we were talking about how the uh, science production was coming along and that brought us into some, um, some resource shortages. And so this brings us back around to that, the iron shortage down here that's li limiting our production of the uh, the tech blank tech cards. And this is an interesting one. And um, this is what's le and this is also the, uh, the the reason why we're seeing over here we're seeing some big shortages of iron plates. The iron ore seems to have recovered a bit actually, and iron ingots, uh, and possibly of um, steel as well. No, the steel seems to be mostly okay. But anyway, this is what's led led on to this problem. So we had a, a, a supply issue, and this was caused by the uh, the supply that comes over from Oliran. So as you may or may not remember, Oliran is an iron planet, and that means when we dig up the iron, when we dig up the cores from here, the core chunks, we can then pulverize them down, we get massive quantities of iron out, and also some of the normal core chunks and a little bit of stone. And then when we pulverize those again over here, when we pulverize the core chunks, we get even more iron out. So we can produce enormous, enormous quantities of iron from Oliran. As you can see here, when we've just dumped all of the miscellaneous stuff that's being produced into this warehouse, we've got 22,000 iron ore and only about 2,000 of, of, of absolutely energy anything else at all, and 200 of most of the things. So there's massive, massive quantities of iron ore being produced over here, um, and then that's all shipped up. In, in the system you're, you're very familiar with, being shipped up into space, and then loaded into uh, in, into a, a system over here where it can then be stockpiled and put into a spaceship when it arrives. And judging by um, the way, the, the state of the system, I th I'd say we've had a spaceship come in relatively recently, but we've then also been able to reload, so it was, it was it's a little while ago. And that spaceship will be on its way back over here to unload even more iron ore, and then that iron ore can be passed into a train here drop down onto Norvis with a secondary elevator and then it'll be picked up by a train like this which will take it off to the smelting areas to unload it here where we can then cook it down into the into the actual iron and the steel that we require and so the system is working quite quite happily it is it is chugging through we, we can see here there is a steady stream of iron iron ingots coming out and those are being brought down here and we will we, we yeah we're chopping some of them up and we're turning them into iron iron plates that are going into the warehouse here we're also trying to fill this one up with um, with iron ingots and we've got yeah we've got less than a train's worth here and much less than a train's worth here. So that's why we're showing such shortages over on the graph. But it is filling up. Problem is that up in Norbit, the trains had stopped flowing. And there were a couple of reasons for the problems over here. Uh, one of them was very much my fault. Um, I'd copied and pasted all of the Oliran station accessory stuff from up here to paste it in here for Stardust without really thinking it through properly and had accidentally copied and pasted the station over. And so um, th that's why Tristan has now renamed the station here, as you can see, sucky soft is, uh, <clears throat> uh, where because before it was it was actually it was called Oli Ran Iron or pickup like that. So the tra so this train had come in here and got stuck because well because I was doing it wrong. However. As well as that, the dis departure signal down here was set on, on was what this thing was watching for 40 um, ticks before the spaceship would go. So we had also run out of iron ore here, and I don't think that one was my fault. I'm not quite sure what happened there. I think we we probably turned off the um, the, the trains running from Oliran or the spaceship going to Oliran because the elevator over there had broken, and we didn't really want to rebuild it again whilst there was still lots and lots of iron ore available in the in the junk that was coming from all of the other planets. However. We then didn't notice that we'd run out of all of that, and so, there, so therefore the, the spaceship had stopped. We've now gone in and fixed all of that. So as you can see, the the, the train well, the train has run. If we have a look out in 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 space, we can see that we can't see the Oliran ship. That's interesting. Ah, here we go. It has arrived in Oliran orbit, so it was on its way out, and it's now filling back up again. And so we've got there we go. We've got we've got a, a very very nearly full spaceship here. Uh, so we just need to wait for the train to come up one more time and and and, and top it off. Wait, I think I saw the ship ship leaving. Oh no. Yes, there we go. So the ship is the ship has now left. It was close enough to fall. There was there was four stacks missing from the top warehouse, but apparently we consider that to be close enough. So now the spaceship is on its way back over to Norbit, and and we'll be able to unload all of that iron ore there, and we'll be able to start smelting through that and get things running again. And so on Norvis, we do have a number of supplies of um, of iron ore. There's the stuff that's coming down over from Oliran, which is being being brought out of the space out of the space elevator over here in this corner. We have the, um, the we have we might have the odd mine knocking around still, but I think they've probably all been fully plundered. We have the core chunk processing that's going on here, where we bring in enormous quantities of core chunks, process them down into well a bit of everything, and we've got all of this iron ore flowing through, so that works quite nicely. And then we've got the uh, the junk unloading down here, where, where trains bring over all of the junk that's been brought from other planets by spaceship, and then we can pass that through. And there's this quite as you can see, there's a decent amount of iron ore in there as well. So we should, in theory, we should never be completely out of iron. However. 
we do need the supply from Ollie Rand to keep us keep us topped up, keep everything running at full speed. And so because Ollie Rand has been stopped for so long, we'd essentially run out of all of our, uh, we, we'd burn through all of our stockpiled iron, and so everything had got down to a really, really low level, and that caused all of the problems that we were seeing down on down with making the tech cards and, and everything else that uses iron. So now we've got a, a, the supply fixed, and we've got the iron coming in again, we can start to actually, you know, cook, cook all the iron up over here in the smeltery, and then start shipping it out to wherever it's needed, and hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll get the tech cards up and running again. We'll get, we'll start making those. And I, this is this is a problem we we have now solved. We just need to wait for it to fill up all of the buffers again to the point where we have enough iron in the in the whole system in general that we can then start having having everything running smoothly again. I also noticed that stone seems to be a little bit low. It's only at about 50%, and that's a little bit of a concern because we we get through we do get through a lot of stone. But the question is. Is, is it actually okay, or do we have a problem? And there are a number of things that use stone. It's, used, it's, it's, it's again, it's also generated over here in, in large quantities. It comes out of the core processing here. It's brought in by the train here. You can see loads of it on the belts down here. And also we bring in enormous quantities of sand, particularly from, I believe it's Taras that produces huge amounts of sand. And so, and, and sand is made directly from stone. So it's another thing that if you have a huge input of sand, then you don't need quite as much stone because you're not making the sand in quite the same rate. But as you can see, we've got the sand pouring out down here. We've got stone coming out down here. And these are all, these, well, the, this is going to what? What's this for? This is probably silicon production. Oh uh, yeah, we see, as you can see, we're making. We've got stone coming in here. We're making sand out of it. Uh, if we had more sand, it would be being brought straight over this way, uh, and that's being made into yes quartz to be made into silicon. So we, we're getting through quite a lot of silicon with all of the circuits and things that we're, we're making. But at the moment, we seem to have enough of it. We are filling up the belts along here, and the and the warehouse down here is full. So that's going, that's going quite well. Stone is also being pumped downwards down here to be made into glass. We need a lot of glass just, just everywhere, because that's another thing that we get through huge amounts of, obviously, as you saw with the uh, the blue science, if nothing else. Uh, and But again, that's that's now just caught up, and that seems to be doing reasonably well. So we have we have reasonable amounts of all the things that are made from stone and, and, and sand, but it doesn't seem to be stockpiling to quite the level that we'd expect it to. If we look over here, we can see that this this, this warehouse is only two-thirds full. This one is, is obviously therefore empty, which is why when we look at the graph over here, we can see that there's not that much of it. So that's, it's a little bit of a concern. Over here, we can see that the lithium is, is sort of okay. It's not, it's not maxed out, but it's sort of okay. That one I'm happy with, because with the way the lithium is set up, uh, there's a certain parts of it turn on and turn off, depending on the amount that we have. Uh, for, for reasons that I think I explained previously. So having this being a little bit low is okay. That's that's sort of expected. Don't have a problem with that. Over here is that is this this is pyroflux. We seem to, we don't have a huge amount of pyroflux. I should probably take a look into that one. Lube seems to be a little bit low, but I don't remember us ever having problems with that. So yeah. All of the sciences are now complaining. This is because we're not shipping them up to space as fast as we would like to. Because the train right now is, has just finished picking them up from the bus and is shipping them over to the science lab area to, in order to uh, process them over there. But now we can see that some of them at least are starting to fill back up again. So we do have a little bit of stock up there still. It's not quite as horrific as I was, as I was implying. But yeah, this all needs needs keeping an eye on. Um, the iron should be recovering. The stone is a little bit of a concern. And the science, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that gets on. Also, in order to help with the iron supply, Tristan's put in this rail across here, uh, with, and with the diagonal and with the diagonal on it there, it should be significantly shorter than taking the route through the base. And the idea of that is, it means that when the trains are coming from down here with the iron ore from Oliran, instead of running up through here through the congested, busy part of the factory and probably getting stuck, or maybe even across here and getting stuck, they can now come up this way across here and then and, and round through here. And that allows them to take a bit of a shortcut, as I say, and then drop off the iron ore up here, hopefully with um, a bit more, a bit more quickly and easily, and without causing con the congestion they would if they went through the middle. He has said that it kind of needs a, a route for going back down again. So I guess the idea would be we could then put another rail across here, and then go out and then go down to join onto the, the rail on the other side over here. We can't just go, go straight through here because there is a train stacker here that is keeping. Uh, this is basically an over a priority station system. So. Putting trains in here allows us to make our prioritization system work by potentially having trains that are closer or further away, depending on what's required, so we can make sure that we use up our metals and our ores in the correct order. Uh, but it would it, he so he can't he can't branch it out from up here and bring it across above because that would be further. But it could come off from about here, go across, and then pull across through here. It'd be a bit weird, um, and have the, tra the rails the wrong way around for where they cross the over the lake, but it would be, it would work, it would probably be okay, and I don't think I hate it too much. 
The Blue Circuit production was struggling at one point. Now, it, it seems to have caught up quite nicely now. I noticed the, the Red Circuit production is running like a like a, a, a mad thing at the moment. We're producing them at, the, at full speed, which is lovely. Um, the, but the, and the Blues have caught up now. And, we'd, and I think this might be at least partly because I discovered there were a couple of machines on the end here that were missing. Uh, because when the blueprint had been dropped in, there was a, there was a Roboport in there. So I, got rid I moved the Roboport up to here and then put in a the couple of extra machines. And, and clearly that has been entirely what has fixed it. Now, we, we, we probably had a blip in the in demand or something like that and we've now been able to catch up since that's uh, maybe, maybe the blip has gone down again uh, we, but we've got a full train over here and a full warehouse so things are looking pretty good I've been talking over the last couple of weeks about decommissioning the other blue circuit production facility as well and I took an important step forwards with that in the last stream by uh, by putting in this by essentially having this belt here go all the way across here and this as you notice is right on the end of these belts and that meant these ones all poured out onto it now it was pretty slow because it's only it was only half a belt I didn't bother with splitters or anything like that and it's all going onto just one side of it and got multiple belts feeding in there and it's all a bit a bit of a mess and not not particularly well thought out but it didn't matter because I didn't care about it being quick I just wanted to drain all the resources out of here and so you can see now that most of the stuff has gone. It came down here, and then I had a sort, uh, a splitter sorting there, and there, and then, and here as well, to make sure that the correct resources went in back into the correct stations. So this means that next time I can do some faffing around with the train and come in and grab the grab the glass, take it away somewhere, probably dump it onto the bus. Same with the silicon and the plastic and 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 and, and the rare metals down here, and and actually and the sulfuric acid as well, and get all of that moved on and taken away to somewhere else. And once that's done. I can then put a deconstruction planner over the whole thing and just remove all of this and at that point we'll then be able to potentially use this area for something else or at the very least it might save us a few UPS by having a load of machines that aren't there anymore. Now there is a, the idea of this was to, to make sure that the bots weren't taking away more stuff than they had to and there's a few things left in here. We've got a few stone bricks left, we've got, uh, we've got some copper uh, plates left. Copper plates are awkward because most places now I think take uh, copper uh, in the form of ingots and they can chop it up on site so having a load of copper plates dumped somewhere could be extremely unhelpful. I don't have an easy way to get rid of those but if we just put them into the logistics system with the bots it'll probably be fine. And the stone bricks there aren't that many of them left so I think that's probably fine as well. So at some point I shall just come in here and I shall put a deconstruction planner over all of this um, well, I can come, come down to about I can come down to about here at this point, um, get get all of that uh, because I still need the rails to come in and pick up all of the uh, all the resources. And I suppose I, I probably want that to, that, that uh, radar to remain, but it's going to need power. The whole thing needs needs a little bit more care and attention than I put into it there. But basically, we're just going to come in, have a massive bot frenzy, and pull out all of all of this because we don't need it anymore. And that's going to be going to be wonderful. It'll be it'll be extremely satisfying. And don't you love seeing huge numbers of bots? Poof, surging around the base like this <laughs> and of course because we've got the recycling system going all of these ones that are carrying the red belts are going to bring them over to here where they'll be put into the presumably uh, oh are we using yellow chests for this at the moment oh no no we've got green chests over here that's fine so they're being put into here and they will then be upgraded to blue chest to blue belts and to green belts and to purple belts as required and the yellow ones are being brought in down here as well so we now have crazy crazy quantities of all these belts available and these bots are the bots going off to charge uh, yeah so yeah, the, the system works, it's bringing them in for recycling and upgrading, that's going to be fantastic. Up in Norbit, Tristan has increased the amount of rare metals we're requesting to fill up the uh, the storehouse down here. And this was to allow him to ship a lot more of them out to Taras, because an, an insufficiency of uh, rare metals was the problem out on Taras for making the making the Immersium. And as you can see, as usual, we've got loads and loads of Immersium plates, but no Immersium crystals. It, as I said yesterday, or in the last video, it swaps back and forth between those two, and there's always a sh there always seems to be a shortage of one or the other. Um, but but never of both, and it, and it changes fairly frequently, so that's... Um, interesting and weird. We also had a shortage of the uh, Vita Melange extract that's being brought over from Big Red. And so we've, uh, tr uh, again, Tristan uh, um, has, has put a, in increased the numbers, I believe, that we're requesting wherever that's being done. I think it's over on Big Red. Uh, and then, and then I think dispatch the ship manually. So maybe it's on its way over. Or maybe we've just got through it all already because the ship isn't in, isn't in motion at the moment. And it's sat here, here in Big Red orbit, filling up with miscellaneous junk. Although that said, there is quite a lot of extract on the, on, in the train. There's about, it looks like about 8,000 um, extract in the train. So the system is basically working. It's just unloading the train in a funny order. But that's absolutely fine. It, it does that. We don't, we don't, we don't care. We don't care what order stuff comes out in as long as it all gets passed through. And as you can see, it clearly is. And the train, the spaceship is less than half full. So it's going to be a little while till it leaves but we do have at least we do have some of the uh, the vitalic extract coming coming through now because we need that for lots of things and we don't seem to have any of it 
Balancing the uh, the big grid system with the Vita, Vita everything is a bit tricky because in theory the ship doesn't leave until it, until it's full because otherwise it's a bit wasteful. But we don't want to order an entire ship's worth of uh, Vital, uh, Vita Melange extract because that would be crazy. There'd be a huge amount of it that wouldn't fit into the storage systems at the other end. But we also don't want to have the ship just sitting there when there's no uh, Vita Melange extract at the other end because then the system isn't going to work. So it, it's a little bit it's a bit of a tricky one uh, working out how to balance it. We've had similar sort of problems with trains before for bringing stuff up into into orbit, uh, but that's been much, much less of a problem because the trains have a much lower capacity than the spaceship, so the storage at the top side, or the destination, has enough room to bring an entire logistics system's worth over before it jams up, whereas now we don't, we don't have that. If we br if brought an entire spaceship's worth of each of the Vita products over, we, we just wouldn't have room to store it. We'd, we'd need to have about 12 warehouses in, in orbit to, to, just to look after all that stuff. Um, and we don't want to go, we don't want to go to that sort of, we don't want to have it set up like that because it's just not going to work. Now you do have all of the, the miscellaneous junk coming through as well. We've got barrels and barrels of stuff there. We've got ores, we've got, uh, uh, we've got cryonite for some reason. That should be being unloaded here. That's a, um, a concern. But yeah, anyway, the idea is that we're filling it, we fill it up with all of the stuff that we want to take away and hopefully we eventually get to a, a, a full spaceship before we actually run out of any of the things that we're trying to take over. It's gonna, it's tricky to balance and we may, we do occasionally have to send a spaceship off manually, so, which isn't ideal, but I, yeah, I don't know. Over here, we, yeah, you see we've, we've fed through some more uh, extract, but now the extract has stopped flowing because we've got in, the amount in the system that we are requesting. So we can't just keep shipping it out because eventually it'll fill up too much at the other end if we stop needing the Vitalik extract so much. And yeah, it, it, it's a difficult one. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to fix this. We found a few delivery cannons that are still in use as well. These ones are still running. They are still they are shipping the lithium chloride up to uh, Norbit in order to be made into biological sciences. Pretty sure that's the one it's for. Uh, so those ideally want to be decommissioned. So we can start bringing it up by train to wherever it is along here. That's, oh, this one. Uh, by, by, we want to start bringing it up by train to here instead of by delivery cannon. But I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that. I don't know exactly how Mark's got this system set up. Because most of the things up here are being supplied He's got an individual station for each, each resource, basically, and I'm not quite sure how he's in, intending to have that set up. So the ones that are being brought around in space, like the um, like the, like the bio sludge and the, um, the the orange goop and the the blue goop and, uh, and, and, and 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 data cards, those are all fine. But things like iron plates and glass, I don't know how he's bringing them up. Uh, there is always oh, using the uh, the the, um, the mic style system where where you bring. A massive train up of all kinds of miscellanea and then tap off that so I guess we're going to have to add the lithium chloride to this one and maybe anything else that's still being delivered by um by by, by delivery cannon for him that's a little bit meh but I guess we'll uh, we'll sort that out Tristan also noticed that uh, iron plates were still coming in to Taras by delivery cannon and they're being dropped in here uh, so he set up a system now to pull out uh, iron ore from the uh, from the core processing over here and cook it down into iron pl iron plates through the the, the very very basic system and then that can be made into steel for barrels I assume um, is that where it's going no, it's being made into nuclear fuel for the reactors down here, which are presumably, yes, they've gone end of life because now bringing everything in by solar and, and, and space elevators. But never mind. Um, yes, the iron can now be brought through up here and then fed into the system that, that way rather than bring it over by delivery cannon. So we, we've, we've, we've tried to decommission all of the delivery cannons everywhere around the, uh, around the entire factory on all of the planets. But there's, we still, every so often, we find one or two left here and there that we haven't, haven't dealt with properly yet. And this is the usual thing where you have you split off everything to go to one side, then you feed out the iron ore in, into there, and then yeah, he's done this a different way to the way I do it, but never mind, it works. You send everything round to the left, and if there's any iron ore, then you pull it out and put it into the into the smelter here, and then let everything else flow back onto the belt up this way. If you have too much iron ore, it'll eventually flow back along here and block up the, it'll block up this splitter, so it'll block up this splitter, and then everything will go past on the right. Personally, I tend to do it with this with the uh, the filter on this one, so it tells all of the iron ore to go that way. And everything else to go this way, and then priority priority splitter out the iron ore to go this way, and then and then when you when it fills up, it just gets passed around back into here. The two systems are functionally completely identical. Uh, it uses exactly the same number of splitters. It has exactly the same effect. There's no real different reason to do it one way or the other. It's just we seem to we seem to have different ideas about the the obvious way to do things. Oh, this was Mark, not Tristan, who set this one up as well. So uh, maybe that's the difference there. And now we can take a look at the researches that were done in the last uh, in the last stream. So we managed energy weapon damage 12. That means that our lasers will all do slightly more damage. And this is great because they don't even use any more power when they do that. So this is 
I mean, it's it's sort of useful. We're mostly killing biters with uh, plague rockets at the moment, so these will mostly be useful for going out and doing pyramid explorations in the future. Uh, but I think Tristan has been doing a lot of these sort of researches because, well, there's there's not much else to do. These are at least nominally useful. But if you look at our uh, the researches we've got left at the moment, we can't really do anything until we've got the deep space science up and running, uh, and when that's and that's at least some way off. And but in, until then, we've just got sort of basic basic upgrades. Uh, we could do an improved pollution filter, but we don't care about pollution anymore because we've nuked we've nuked all the biters everywhere. We could do rocket upgrades, we don't care about that. We could do zone discoveries, but we don't care about that. We could make our weapons better, but again, we don't really care about most of that. So a lot of these things we've got we've just got to the limit of what we can research. So we're doing things for the sake of it rather than because there's anything particularly useful there. Which is kind of why we've now done follower robot count three times over. Once here um, with advanced tech cards, once here with production tech packs, and once here with uh, utility tech packs. Uh, and they all appear to be, the, they, they're all follower robot six, um, but we managed, we have done all three of them separately. So does that mean we've got the bonus three times over and we've, we've got uh, following robots plus five, plus five, plus 15? Or does it mean we've wasted a load of science back? I, I, don't, I don't really know, but it does look like you need to have done all three uh, follower robot count sixes in order to do follower robot count seven which would get you an extra plus 10 so i i don't know but we, we've done we've done all of those anyway we have unlocked the advanced pickaxe which um increases your character mining speed by plus 200 percent bringing us up to a total of plus 350 percent so putting that one in has taken us presumably from plus 150 to plus 350 which is almost a doubling of the speed we can rip stuff up off the ground at oh uh, because to be honest we don't really do mining of actual ores by hand anymore but we do pick up buildings from time to time so yeah being able to do that twice as quickly is going to be it's going to be handy it's very useful especially when you're running along a huge row of belts going grab 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 just to pull all the belts up that, that sort of thing or pulling up low, uh, big big areas of buildings so having that running faster is going to be very very nice and the big one and the reason we've been ripping through quite so much uh, astro science recently um, is that Tristan's done um, the, has done zone discoveries from 36 to 112 so that's, that's got I mean that doesn't use all that many science packs each time I guess but when you add them all together maybe it, it seems like it feels like quite a lot uh, so yeah we've done a lot of done a lot of researches this time because we've done huge numbers of the zone discoveries uh, I don't. We means we. I think we are still finding planets around other stars. Stars. Um, I don't know whether whether that's actually useful, but we have certainly been finding them. We've done physical projectile damages eight, nine, and ten. So that means the bullets do more damage. I don't know if we're still using bullets anywhere, but if we are, they will do a bit more damage than they did before. Uh, and these, as you can see, each each subsequent one of these you do requires slightly more advanced science packs. So this one is a material science pack three. This one is, oh, this one's also a material science pack three. Oh no, there we go. There's a, there's a difference in science requirements there is this one requires an optimization tech card. This one requires an advanced tech card. So it's a step up in the, it, it, it uses more and more and more advanced sciences. And if we look at number 12, then that requires a matter science pack. And number 13 is a deep space science pack. So as you get through the infinite researches, before they go fully infinite and just use Deep Space Science 4 because that's the hardest one, essentially each one will move up one step in the in, in the research complexity. So you get lots and lots of them to lots and lots of them to do, and each one of them will give you a, a bit of a boost to how much damage you can do with your shootings. And similarly, in the well, we've got all these labs and all this research set up built, we might as well carry on researching things. Uh, we've done lots of we've done uh, refined flammables five to eight, and apparently nine finished while I was making uh, making the video as well because we're part way through ten now. And these make your flamethrowers more effective. And we, again, we're not using flamethrowers anywhere, so it's, it's a little bit pointless. But yeah, again, it keeps us, it keeps the labs running over. And you might have noticed that quite a lot of these have been military sciences, and that's why we've been getting through quite so many of the military tech cards, and hence why we were getting through quite so much of this biter creep as I talked about earlier, and why we're getting through quite so many of these 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 tech cards, the blank tech cards as they came through. So yeah, it's been a bit of a um, We've been using a lot of these, but we've not been we've not really been producing them as fast as we need them. However, we've not really been worrying about that because we don't really care about these military researches. They're just something there to keep to keep. It's something so we've got something running rather than leaving the labs completely silent. Uh, so we'll just. If, if once we get move on to doing proper research again, we'll stop doing the military stuff. We'll let those backlog a bit. So if we do find any military ones we do want to do, then we'll be able to. But then we'll have a backlog built up and we'll be able to run them pretty quickly. Now it looks like the tech cards have started to flow again, uh, not enormously quickly, and no, there's a big gap here. So it looks like we had some iron arrived, we managed to grab some of it to make blank tech cards, and then it ran out very, very quickly because everything was trying to use that, that uh, supply of iron that came in. Ah well, it's, it's basically fixed, we just need to wait for things to fill up again. 
And so, that will be the end of the, uh, the video. Thank you very much for watching, as ever. Uh, as, as I've been saying, there's not going to be any more uh, content this week, I'm afraid, because I'm going to be away busy doing, uh, doing theatre stuff. Um, but the week after, I should be back as, on Tuesday as normal for the Satisfactory stream, followed by the uh, the Thursday Factorio Space Exploration Crastorio 2 stream, and then the usual um, catch-up videos on the Saturday and the Monday. And I'm going to try and get, start getting some more uh, videos coming out here and there as well. So th there should be plenty of stuff going on on the, uh, on the channel, so please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of it. And uh, once again, thank you very much for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.